today, I want to talk about how AMC could reach over $13,000 per share in a MOAS scenario. Now, I don't want to base this on pure speculation. I want to base this on facts, calculations, and what's already happened in the past. And I also want to answer the questions from those that say a price like that just isn't possible. So stay tuned and let's make some money. Now I'll dive straight in with the key information. So Edward Burchuk tweeted saying, as a reminder, Volkswagen stock that was bought by Porsche to flush the shorts ran to a peak of over $1,000 per share back on October 28th, 2008. He said AMC right now is below $10 per share, which is below a dollar pre-reverse split. And he said if Porsche, just one company, could wipe out the shorts and Volkswagen only hit over $900 per share, how many of those millions could we wipe from these short sellers? And he said he's not leaving until there's no more market makers left and those criminals are liquidated. So this article says a supply and demand imbalance, which AMC has as well, triggered a monumental short squeeze that drove its share price from 210 euros to more than a thousand euros per share in less than just two days. Saying indeed Volkswagen also became the world's largest company by market value or market capitalization on October 28th, albeit very briefly. Saying short sellers still trying to close out their positions ended up paying over a thousand euros per share, which in turn put VW's holding stock at a hefty 296 billion euros, exceeding the 343 billion dollar market capitalization of ExxonMobil. So that's quite a lot to unpack there, but let's start by looking at what AMC's price would be like with a $343 billion market capitalization. So right now, AMC's share price is $9.42 and has a market capitalization of $1.87 billion. So if we take AMC's share price of $9.42 and its market cap of just $1.87 billion and multiply by VW's old market cap of $343 billion, you get an AMC share price of $1,727 per share. But let's also remember for a very brief period in time, Volkswagen was also the world's largest company by market capitalization. Obviously due to market growth over the last 15 or so years and due to inflation and everything else that's gone on in the world since then, the largest companies by market cap have increased significantly. Right now, ExxonMobil is no longer the largest company in the market. Right now, it's Apple with a market cap of $2.6 trillion. So if we take AMC's same share price of $9.42, divide by that same market cap of $1.87 billion, and multiply by a market cap of $2.6 trillion, you get a share price for AMC of over $13,147 per share. So as you can see, just based on the Volkswagen dynamics, AMC could easily reach over $13,000 when you factor in just how many synthetic shares have been sold short. Back in 2008, there was no synthetics in Volkswagen and the total liabilities of those shorted shares was around $30 billion. But obviously, in the case of AMC, we know the number of synthetics are well into the billions, and we know the liabilities that these market makers are holding are well into the billions as well. Because obviously, Citadel has over $65 billion in security sold, not yet purchased, which are effectively those FTDs in the obligation warehouse and some hidden overseas short positions too. Now, some might say, Tom, AMC would never overtake Apple in terms of market capitalization, even just for a brief moment. But what I say to that is that Volkswagen did back in 2008. And actually, Volkswagen was struggling at the time. It says in 2007, many hedge funds held the view the VW stock had become overvalued and increased their short positions in the troubled car maker. It says VW had a mass substantial debt by that time and the global financial crisis unfolded. Of course, VW only suffered further as the demand for new cars collapsed. So back when VW squeezed, VW was a struggling company looking to enter bankruptcy because new car sales had collapsed and they had significant debt. That sounds kind of similar to AMC back in 2020 when they had significant debt and were making substantial losses. 
but obviously now AMC is turned around and is making substantial profits. So if a failing, loss-making, near-bankruptcy car retailer can squeeze back in 2008, a profitable, successful AMC could squeeze now. Now again, you may say Tom the Shorts and the SEC and the Fed wouldn't ever let AMC get that high. It would cause too much losses for these market makers. And to that, I say maybe, but it's a little bit more complex. If AMC does start running into the thousands of dollars per share, it's very possible that AMC could indeed be U3 halted and a deal worked out with short sellers. But if that happens, in one sense, we've already won because the price of AMC is squeezing and now it's just a case of determining how much we settle for. And obviously, on the other hand, that really is where the real battle begins. If AMC is indeed U3 halted, that's where we as retail investors need to push back on the SEC, on the Fed and on everyone else to ensure a fair settlement. And depending on what your terminology of a fair settlement is, whether that's bankruptcy, a specific price target, or prison for those short sellers, I guess that's for you to decide. And for those out there that say AMC could never possibly squeeze, I say simply that those guys don't understand market dynamics. The Fed themselves have said during periods of increased volatility, these over leveraged hedge funds have been close to being liquidated, posing significant market risk. They've said time and time again, over leveraged hedge funds are holding too much leverage and it's creating significant volatility. That was in the financial oversight report to do with meme stocks and to do with just general market volatility as well. And obviously, if these over leveraged hedge funds do become too over leveraged during the next market crash, they will get liquidated. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. We've already seen hedge funds being liquidated back in 2022. And if the market does crash further, that will get even worse. And obviously, while a hedge fund is being liquidated, it's forced to sell off its long positions and close out of its shorts. So if one of the larger players like Citadel do get liquidated, which they were very close to being liquidated back in 2008, it will cause the squeeze. Citadel may end up being bailed out by the Fed, but they'd still be required to close out those illegal short positions, causing an AMC squeeze. It'd just be paid for by the Fed instead of by Citadel. Peter Han has also tweeted about his unwavering confidence in an AMC squeeze as well. So he tweeted saying, OK, this is starting to get arsenine. He said, I used to blow a fuse at every rubbish article from the Motley Fool or Seeking Alpha. He said it got exhausting, so he just stopped reading those articles. And he said almost every single day for the last month, and I'd imagine a lot longer, Investor Turf has put out some rubbish negative AMC related story. He said, what possible reason would you feel the need to put out a hit piece every single day? And he said the only reason they'd spend so much time writing about one single stock is if they have a financial incentive to bash that stock. And he said, so the more rubbish articles they put out, the more Peter Han is inclined to do the opposite of what they want, which is buying more shares. I also recently found out that Ken Griffin now is planning to build a $1 billion home on multiple different plots in Florida. But as Crypto Collide points out, it's interesting that Ken wants to build such an expensive home in a state that protects one from losing their property in bankruptcy. So it seems like Ken Griffin isn't just trying to tuck away a few million dollars or a few hundred million, he's trying to tuck away billions for his impending and potentially imminent bankruptcy. Especially as that property won't even be in his own name, it's going to be in the name of his mum. So it just seems weird that Ken Griffin is specifically trying to hide so much money in a state that won't take that property away during bankruptcy. I also wanted to quickly go through my fast moving momentum news player of the day, which was APLM or Apolymix. I said anywhere over this 125 level, especially after gaining confirmation, could cause the stock to run higher, which it did by an additional 16% during those market hours. Again, this was our standard gap and go strategy, running past these previous pre-market highs, giving us a number of bars over those highs, giving us that confirmation, and then running off to the races. 
A 16% profit today isn't as big as some of the profits we had earlier in the week, but as I've always said, nobody's ever gone bankrupt taking 10 to 20% profits every single day. Also remember on Monday, I'm gonna be releasing a much better way to alert you guys of these fast moving momentum news plays and fully fleshing that out into a trading group as well. So be sure to look forward to that announcement on Monday. But guys, be sure to let me know what you think down in the comments below. And as always, guys, be sure to ding that notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.